sentiment against Muslims and refugees has been making headlines both locally and around the country. But what you may not know is that Muslim immigrants have a unique place in North Dakota and our nation's history. KVR's Adam Ladwig joins us live with this story more than 100 years in the making. Adam? TJ and Allison, Muslim settlers came to America looking for a place they could call home. They found that place here in North Dakota. KVR Chief Photographer Patrick Conte and I traveled to Montreal County to find out about these early settlers and the legacy they left across the state. Sitting alone on the western North Dakota prairie, a monument to early pioneers. A monument unknown to people who live just six miles away in Stanley unknown to the descendants of the people who worshipped here. Descendants of people buried here. I had had no idea that there was a mosque there, that my family was had been Muslim. This is the site of the first mosque ever built in America. But how did this spot become a part of history? Father William Sherman literally wrote the book on the settlers who built the mosque. During the homestead period, people were coming out here because of free land. The promise of land brought out settlers from what is now modern-day Lebanon. Back then, the region was in Syria. 300 Muslim families came out here. Everybody was coming, see. One of those immigrants was Ali Omar, the great-grandfather of Nicole Madsen of Moorhead. He was about to be drafted into the Turkish army, and he didn't want to fight for the Ottoman Empire um, because they were basically occupying his country, and so he came to the United States. He came to North Dakota in 1909, but it wasn't until 20 years later that the first mosque in America was built. They had enough of a community at that point that it was worth building a mosque. The building was completed in 1929, a place where they could practice their beliefs. But it wasn't that simple for a group largely made up of rural farmers. They didn't have seminaries, so that it was just one of the more literate guys in the community who would leave the prayer service. Without permanent religious leaders, the mosque fell out of use in the mid-1930s, the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl taking a toll on the Muslim population. Many people went on to the West Coast where there was some jobs. You would think that when the original mosque shut down and worshippers stopped coming that it would close the door on this history of North Dakota. But more than 80 years later, their legacy lives on across the state. My dad, he came here right from, like I say, uh, Syria. Joe Juma still lives in Stanley, where his Muslim father met his Norwegian mother. Run off and got married, grabbed her, I guess. <laughs> they, her, her folks, their relatives, didn't think too much of it, you know. Descendants of the Muslim settlers dot the map. Williston, Bismarck, the Red River Valley. A fact that shows how the immigrants were able to live in harmony with other early North Dakotans. Now we looked at that very carefully. I... Uh, I checked the newspapers, you know, and I checked the crime records and the school records and so on, see. Anything that would indicate prejudice against them, and then it wasn't there. There didn't seem to be a lot of issues. It wasn't like it sounds now. In fact, that lack of conflict is part of the reason the mosque isn't remembered as well today. That generation really had assimilated with the, you know, um, local community. Madsen didn't know about her heritage until seeing her aunt quoted in Father Sherman's book. I called my grandma and I was like, what's the deal? I didn't know any of this. But there are efforts to keep the story alive. The original mosque was demolished in the 1970s. A cemetery, the final resting spot of about 30 settlers, remained. And a replacement mosque was built about a dozen years ago. People like Madsen are proud her heritage continues. I just thought it was really cool because who, you know, how often do you find out that, that your family was involved in something historical that you'd never heard of before? Despite the long history of Muslims in North Dakota, anti-Muslim sentiment seems to be growing. Lutheran Social Services has been under fire for helping refugees resettle in Fargo. And a Somali-owned restaurant was firebombed in Grand Forks after Nazi-themed graffiti was sprayed on the building. People who know about the early Muslims say a lesson can be learned today. You can learn that America is a mixing pot of people, see. And so you take people for what they are. If, if they're nice people, they're nice people. I think just like Christians, there are many different kinds of Muslims, and the majority of them are just regular people who 
you know, want to live their lives in peace like everybody else. They hope the Muslim history can help create harmony in the present and the future in North Dakota. Muslims from around the country make trips to visit the First American Mosque, the mosque and cemetery are managed by the children and grandchildren of the original settlers. They are discussing the possibility of turning the care of the site over to the North Dakota State Historical Society. Reporting live, Adam Ladwig, KVRR News.